You know, we are in what looks like the last days, but it's been looking like the last days many centuries. <laughs> so we are in a last day in the sense that Christ, when he comes back, will end that day. He is the day star. That's who we're waiting for. And no man knows the day or the hour. But I want you to know that God's mercy is so great, even in the tribulation, even in the tribulation, when man is going to be worshiping a devil, many of them, even in the tribulation, when people are fearful of, of the enemy because he's gotten such a stronghold, people are afraid to mention the name of Jesus. Even in the tribulation period, God wants his gospel to be preached. Yes. Even in the tribulation, when all hell is broke loose and the church is gone, <clears throat> even in the tribulation, the Lord wants the gospel preached because the gospel is the only way for men to be saved. Yes. <clears throat> so if they hear during the tribulation, they're not going to hear a church singing, I hope you know Satan ain't going to let that happen. They are, they're not going to hear a preacher crying out to God unless he's ready to lose his head. <coughs> no, in the tribulation, God is going to send angels to preach the gospel. Yes. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only way men will be saved. So even in the last minute when people have turned him down, when they've been worshiping a pure the devil, and they're afraid to even lift the Lord's name up during that time, you say, is that time, is that really going to happen? Hey, look, you need to look around. All through history, there have been people who have tried to lift themselves up above the name of Jesus. What makes you think? That you, 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 you think that that won't happen again and fully manifest itself. See, that thing wants you to be afraid of it, not God. But today, I want you to know as this Antichrist is forming himself in this world you're living in, and if you think it's up on a movie or it's a joke, I, I tell you, it's not. I almost wish it was. But in those days, the thing you need to get back to fearing, and I'm hoping you're not here. But if you are, you need to fear God, not man. Yes. And you need to give God the glory. Yes. Our message today is fear God and give God the glory. Yes. Stop fearing everything else. Ain't nothing else worth fearing. No. Nah. Fear God and give God the glory. In Revelation 14, beginning with verse 6, for the sake of time, we're going to move. Oh boy. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God, read it with me, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. In other words, don't worship nothing else. Don't worship a man. Don't call a man Jesus. Don't say a man is the Messiah. Don't say a man is your deliverer. Don't say a man is your savior. No. Fear God and give him the glory. Yeah. Yeah. Don't honor no man. And don't run behind no man. And the lady said, we know that. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Fear God. That angel, you say, well, why he had to send an angel? Well, you see, the church ain't here. You're in the tribulation. You're in the tribulation. And don't ask me where the church is because you shouldn't know. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house. Yes. 
I hope you don't think Satan gonna let crosses be shining. So some of y'all who don't like to see that, you're gonna be in a good place. Because Satan will make sure every door to every church is closed. You say, how can that happen so fast? Just need to look at history a little bit. The Jewish people who stayed in Germany thinking it's gonna be all right. Think about that. That didn't happen. Today, I want you to know it's a big, the beginning of wisdom is to begin to fear God now. Fearing God is just the beginning of some kind of wisdom. You say, I want to understand things. Well, fear God, not man. Right? Mm -hmm. And give God the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I got lots of scripture, but I want you to know this about the gospel. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Even when Satan has exalted himself, the only way men are going to get saved is not by bowing down to him. No, it's going to be by hearing the gospel. And where they're going to hear it from? Preachers are hopefully gone. If those preachers are still here, they ain't going to be able to preach the gospel. You say that's so far-fetched. People just think about how secular things have already become so fast. People are afraid to pray in their schools. Afraid to lift the name of Jesus up on their job. Afraid to call sin, sin. We are moving in those days. Lifting up a vile man. Vile man. Listen, people are following vile men. They know their lifestyle. They know what they're about. And they follow. You say, you know, how can that be? Well, we don't need to say when the day of the hour is coming. But you need to know when the time is near. Listen, I want you to know a few things about giving glory to God. One of the things I want you to know, God created us for his glory. Yes, yes. You don't have to turn to these scriptures, but we'll talk about them later. And that is in Isaiah 43, 7. God created you for his glory. And he said in the scripture, he will not share his glory with another. You are the glory of God. Yes. And that's reasons why you're not supposed to just go and sin like you want. Yes. The Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, many of us, including me, have not always lived up to what we've been made for. You've been made for his glory. Yes, yes. Somebody say, I need to return to being who God made me for. Yes, God created us for his glory. Yes, he did. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, do everything for the glory of God. Yes. Everything's for the glory of God. Don't go around here <laughs> condemning people, saying bad things, gossiping about people. You know, if it ain't giving God no glory, shut your mouth. There you go. Yeah. I don't know why you got to be murmuring and talking about people. If it ain't giving God no glory, just shut up. Yeah. Everything you ought to be doing ought to give God some glory. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And then it's how I want you to know God, Jesus, is the king of glory. Not say he'll never be. That's what he want, but he'll never get it. God, Jesus Christ, is the king of glory. That's Psalm 24, 8. And then I want you to know <clears throat> there were many men who observed the glory of God. Remember Stephen being stoned? He said he saw Jesus at the right hand of the glory of God. When Abraham was called out of, out of Ur, the Bible says it was the glory of God that appeared to Abraham. Ezekiel, when he was looking at the temple, the temple to come, he saw the glory come in. God made you for his glory. Somebody need to say, I made for his glory. Made for his glory. Wow, that was good. You need to live your life like you've been made for his glory. Yes. Listen, <clears throat> glory means weight and honor. In other words, the glory means, that's the way I put all my weight in. You know, 
I, I, I put my weight on God. I put my strength in Him, like the song was singing. Today, the song they were singing, He's my strength. Yes. All my weight is on Him. That's how glory is. Everything I do, I, I weigh it with Him. I weigh whether this is right. Should I go up and fight? Or should I stand still and be at peace? Everything should be weighed with God. Because you are a person that gives God the glory. When you succeed on your job or your business, you give God the glory. When you raise your children and they, been, and they look like they're doing fine, you give God the glory. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'll tell you, everything is the weight and glory of God. Yes. You never attribute anything to yourself. Like you're the reason. You know, so, you know, I would never be a preacher to say the reason the chapter two of this chapter lasted 25 years because it got good preaching. That, that doesn't give God no glory. That's right. You'd run from that church if I say that. No. Chapter 2 is chapter the last 25 years because God's glory is here. Yes. Yes. His presence is here. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, see, and, and see, when God comes in this house, it is His house. And when you come in, you give Him glory. Hallelujah. Treat your church like the glory of God is here. Some people have had vision. I have, and I'm not going to tell you everything, but I, in this house, it's a holy place. Because God's glory dwells in it. It was founded for His glory. It's your love for Him that cast out all fear. Perfect love. That's why you don't have no fear of God. You just can rush into church and be in fellowship. See, people don't like fellowship and, and, and to come to church because they, they're afraid. But you don't have no fear of God. You want to run here. You want to be here. You want to be in the fellowship because you want to give God the glory for your life. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I have a few things that I researched myself and decided that it's best that I give you these things today and we'll catch up on some things next week. But I want you to say, I, I want you to know how you can give God the glory. When the choir is up here singing, praise him with your lips. Listen, people. Psalm 63, verse 3 says, praise him with your lips. My lips shall praise him. Use your body to start showing yourself up to God. Raise your hands and lift them up. Use your lips. Don't just hum along. No. Give God glory by using that tongue of yours Amen. to sing praises to his name. Amen. Give God the glory. Somebody there to say, my lips belong to God. I shall speak his glory. Hallelujah. Then I want you to know to obey his word. Obey his word. He told you to be baptized. My daughter-in-law got baptized last Tuesday. You know, not because anybody made her, not because she thought she had to, but because she wanted to obey God's word. Hallelujah. Just like me, she was sprinkled at birth. But baptized means baptized. Don't go on. Yes. Today, I want you to know, obey his word. And then he says, I want you to know this, pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. You don't pray in his name. You know, when you pray, don't be afraid to say, in the name of Jesus. Yes. When you ask God for something, say, in the name of Jesus. Yes. When you pray, do it all in the name. Because you give God the glory, because you glorify his son. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be fruitful in your life. Show people love. You know, it's the hardest thing for some people to do is to love others. That's the easiest thing for me to do. God knows it's true. It's so sad to say sometimes. People don't have to love you back for you to love them. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says love, <coughs> it covers a multitude of offenses. Yes. People get offended easily because they don't walk in love. 
I want you to be fruitful. One of the first fruits of the Spirit is love. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And remain sexually pure. Now, you know, y'all can say what y'all want. That's not an easy task. <coughs> but you work at it. Now, when you get old, it might be a lot easier. But when you're young, you can talk that noise to young people. <laughs> I've done that many times just to get a slap right back up in my face. Are you crazy? <laughs> but as you grow in Christ, yes, yes. as you mature in Him, yes. keep your body sexually pure. You're giving God the glory. Yes. It's not your body anymore if you've been saved. Your body belongs to God. Okay, I don't get too many amens. It don't matter, but that's, that's scripture, baby. Yes, yes. That's just scripture. If you can't live up to it, try to. You see, I don't like people to make rules for me. That ain't in the word. Don't, don't give me a rule that's not consistent with God's word. I want to know the truth. The Bible says the truth is set me free. Amen. Condemnation is bad, but conviction is good. When the Holy Spirit convicts you and says, oh, you better get that straight, you know you ain't doing the right thing. That don't mean you're a bad person. That means you understand grace. Yes, yes, yes. And God will give you grace. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're willing to not change his word, just believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People are all confused today because they're trying to accommodate everybody's sins. You're supposed to love everybody. But God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, y'all don't look like y'all want to give God glory this week. But I want you to give him glory. Your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This is, for some, some reason, we just we read this at every baptism, but I want you to go to, uh, we don't read the whole thing, but we go down and get it. Go to 1 Corinthians 6. Sometimes, this the hard one, I guess. Oh. See, we think that certain kinds of sins are offensive to just God. No, it's offensive to your own body. Because your body is for the glory of God. Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. And you say, why that preacher preaching that he know he ain't always doing that? And I show sure happen. But I'm trying like the dick is now. As an old man, I want to get it right. Yeah. Now, you young people, that's why you have grace. Hallelujah. But some of you old people, you need to straighten up. <laughs> okay, okay, my man. I'm just going to tell you the truth, right? Verse 18 of chapter 6, 1 Corinthians. You there? Yeah. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Is that in your Bible? Y'all just y'all reading another book. Some of y'all staring mighty hard like you don't believe that. I see you, brothers. Especially the men. They looking at that. Is that really the way it is? Okay, well you read it. Read it with me. Let's go together. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against who? His own body. Do you not know, read it with me, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You, read it, read it, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. That's another word for give God the glory. Yes. Honor your God. Honor your God. How are you going to honor God? With your body? How many of y'all got that? How many of y'all always had that? But how many of y'all always lived up to it? Oh! <laughs> Some of y'all did. Okay, praise the living God. And I sure wouldn't question it. I believe it. Listen. How many of y'all know remain sexually pure and give glory to God? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Seek God. 
Seek the good of others above yourself. Seek the good of others. We'll give glory to God. Stop just living for yourself. Help somebody else. Hallelujah. We got a lot of people got a lot of help around here. Matter of fact, I don't know anybody who's consistent in church that doesn't help other people. We're a church that wants to help others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a good way for you to give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give generously. How can a small church do the things we do because we have givers? And because we don't throw your money away. Live honorably. Oh, by the way, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. Live honorably among, among believers. In other words, honor all other believers. Don't think you holier than thou. Honor believers, wherever they are and wherever you think they are. Be grateful to God that you have, you have other believers around you. Hallelujah. Because the fellowship gives glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants you to fellowship and be together like we were yesterday socially and like we are today in church. Endure persecution. And that's something. I've been reading about a lot of martyrs endure persecution. You're going through some things. You're going through some suffering sometimes. Yes. But you can endure and that gives glory to God. Because yes. yes. his son suffered for the glory of his father. So you and I go through things so that we can give glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, I mostly, I know many of us when we get sick, we feel sorry for ourselves for just a little while, but then we get our strength back and we thank God that we're still here and we're fighting a good fight. Hallelujah. But don't feel sorry for yourself. It rains on the just and the unjust. It don't mean you did anything wrong. It just means I'm in a battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. So your suffering, and even if you die, to live as Christ, Paul said, to die as him. So you can give glory to God even in your death. But you live for his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all understand what I'm preaching? Yes. And I hope to finish next week. But I want you to understand that in those last days, during the tribulation period, the gospel is going to be preached by angels. Because the people do not know the truth who are still left here. But God's mercy endures forever. How many of y'all know His mercy endures forever? Even when Satan thinks he's in control of everything, God gonna send his angels to the people to preach. So they have a way out. Somebody say, I need a way out. I, a way out. I gotta get out from under the pressures and the, and the circumstances of this old life. And I gotta find a way to set myself free to get the entanglements off my feet so that I can run my race. How many of y'all like to run your race? without having entanglements, things yes. to hold me back. Yes, yes. I just want to give God the glory. How many of you want to give God the glory? Yes. yes. I, I just want to give him glory. Today, one way to give him glory is to be with you today. All of you in here. Because you're sitting in front of, behind, and next to someone. You need to give God the glory for that person. I want you to live for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hey, y'all, come on now. We can do all that together. Your life belongs to God. You're created for His glory. Somebody needs to say, I've been created for the glory of God. That's all you need to know. Don't fear nothing but God. Don't you fear man. Don't you fear sickness. Don't you fear death. Just fear God. And give Him the glory. Almighty God, bless your people and keep them. Let your face shine upon them. And as we see this eclipse, or some people will see this eclipse tomorrow, there's no light greater than your glory. 
And Lord, I thank you, Father. You prepare us to receive your glory. For we live for your glory. And we are your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church family, friends, visitors, and volunteers. Once again, we're at the end of our service. I stand before you and offer you the door that the church is now opening. What that means if you need a church home, look no further. We are right here. Remember a while back I said there was three homes you would need. I didn't say you should have need. A family home, a church home, and a heavenly home. And God has the key. Not I. But God has the key to all the homes. So if there's one person needing a home, we are the church home right here. Yes, yes. So please come. The Bible tells in John, I believe around 3rd, 14 and 3, where he will go and prepare a place for you. And when he get ready, he's going to come back for you. Oh, young, what have you. He's coming back. Well, you may say, I'm 18, I'm 25, I'm 62. He hadn't came yet, but the rest is here. He said his word. He's going to come back. Yes, yes. I want to leave you the last thing. Just yesterday, I mean, the other day, I was uh, going to New Orleans to a food bank. And I seen people walking. With things. I seen one guy riding a bike, another guy in a buggy, put riding. I said, Look, I ain't saying nothing like the pillar. I ain't saying nothing. I said, Thank you, Lord, because that could have been me. You know. Because we all go through things. But remember, God has the last say. Yes, it does. So is there one? If not, thank you. And always remember, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, if you bear with us, my wife said, how you going to get all of us in one picture? We're going to do the men and the women and see how they work out first. Okay. And then we might join in if we think that if you're a visitor, take a picture with us. It ain't going okay. Hallelujah. 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 It don't mean you chop the tools. It means you love the church. That's yes. all. Yes. And I hope you do. So when you get ready, we're going to take a picture. And I, I need somebody who knows how to use that phone so we can send it to put it on the internet for our anniversary. Uh, I think Mark. That's my boy. Yeah, Mark. He takes a great picture. <laughs> So we're going to go out after this blessing, mm -hmm. and if you wouldn't mind, Mark, get ready to sit your ladies. And can somebody help just organize us? We're going to do the ladies first because they're prettier. Okay. And we're going to do them first. And then the men are going to do that. And we'll see how that works, and if we all can join together, we'll do that. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. All right. Me and Lucinda took a picture. I think Jocelyn took it or somebody <laughs> yesterday. Mm -hmm. and we took a picture in the sign, and I think Perry, you took a picture in the sign. But we're going to do it as a church, and that's the one we're just going to post. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all blessing you. I love you with everything in me. I have no, you have no idea how much love me and my wife have for you with your name on it. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's not like we guessing about who we love. It's you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all be blessed and keep the faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.